if your personal relations with people, if those people don't breathe life into you and they're just energy vampires, then they're not serving you. If your circle doesn't inspire you, you don't have a circle, you have a cage. You're trapped in your cage. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of The Doc Jock Show. I'm excited to talk about today's topic because this has been popping up again since the new year. A lot of eruptions of unhappiness, fear, anxiety, depression have really crept up, like I said, in the last, like now, as well as like the last year, basically pre-COVID. We kind of have a new new grasp on life. Like, what do we want to do with our life? What do we want to do with our health? But people are fearful of making certain advances or going certain directions whenever it comes to making these choices. So today I want to talk about what's known as the power of the pool. Did a little Instagram video on this. Again, I'm, I'm giving the credit for the title, the power of the pool to Stephen Furtick, because it was one of those things where when I was opening up, when we were opening up our business, kept waking up with like a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of discomfort. And one of my really good friends, Jeff Hessem, told me about a book is called Crash the Chatterbox. And so I didn't really know much about Stephen Furtick at the time, started reading that book. And whenever I would wake up at like midnight, one o'clock with massive anxiety, I would just go read that book. From that, I started watching a lot of the Elevation Church sermons. And he did this whole little mini series. If you haven't watched it yet, even if you're not religious, it's still great to watch, but it's called the power of the pool. And so he's talking about how, you know, God, I believe, and I'm probably going to misquote this and I apologize. I'm not a scholar of the Bibles, but he was talking about how you're supposed to strike the arrow on the ground. I think it was six times or seven times or something of that nature. He only did it like three times. And then you had the power of the pool or the power of the arrow. So he put the arrow in the bow and he just tried to push it and then put another arrow in, try to push it. And it just kept flopping down on the ground. So he's basically saying in order to accomplish your goals, you have to work hard, do as you're told, but then also be able to draw back, pull, all right, add tension to that bow in order to make the arrow launch as far as it can go. So when we're talking about adversity, when we're talking about doing things for ourselves, whether it's in business, whether it's in our lives, whether it's with our health, our spouse, where we need to fully understand what's going on is when we do these transitions, there's always going to be tension. There's always going to be adversity. I can almost guarantee nobody ever became a millionaire, billionaire, etc., without confronting the fear of failure or actually failing or just a ton of adversity. Okay. Even myself, where we are right now, we still go through different trials of adversity. But when you have and you're armed with the knowledge that like, listen, the stronger the adversity is, the harder you're pulling back on the bow, which means once you get through that adversity, you're going to launch forward to that end goal or whatever that you know looks like or wherever that ends up for you. So that's what we're going to spend some time talking about today, the power of the pool. So the power of the pool can sometimes also be wrapped into the fear of failure. All right. Or Satan's coming up and trying to tell you you can't do something, you're worthless, you're not worthy. A lot of that, the mental games, a lot of the mental battle is where we struggle. If we can't control our thoughts, we can't control our actions. Okay. Because our, our thoughts lead to our actions, right? The actions speak louder than words because they're basically just our body just doing exactly what we're told to do. So when it's coming to the power of the pull, it's coming to that, come to the fear of failure. We have to really be able to understand that if we want to step out and hit that next level of health, or if we want to hit that next level of business, or we're done with our business and we want to be an entrepreneur, we have to know that there will always be adversity that we're going to face. There's always going to be something telling us that we shouldn't. There's going to be self-doubt, self-disbelief. But if a memory or a thought was implanted into your mind, there was a reason that it was there. And it would be wise for us to listen to that in order for us to be able to fully project ourselves forward. And so I actually get excited when there's new adversity. Sometimes I'll go through, trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm human. Like I'll go through different feelings of anxiety and things like that, ups and downs, et cetera. But then when I sit down, I actually sit back and I, and I look at it. I'm like, you know what? 
this level of adversity may be the worst I've ever faced at this point, but I'm really excited because I'm really excited to see where this adversity is going to launch me. And that's not the typical mindset whenever it comes to life, again, business, relationships, etc. Because that fear is an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to troubleshoot. I like to, I like to oftentimes say, you know, we know where point A is, right? We know where we are. We know where point B is, whatever it might be for you, open your own business, going out on your own, traveling, health, whatever. We know where point B is, but what we don't know is what's in between. What we do know is that we don't know (laughs) what is in between. So for those of you who don't know, I played college football and I was a tight end and I knew about receiver routes. I loved running routes and it was, it was enjoyable because you never knew what the defender was going to do. And so when we talk about prepping for things, point A, point B, I, I associate or I talk about it like it's like I'm running a route. Say I'm running a, a post route, going down, boom, and I'm breaking on it. I don't know what the defense is going to do. I can assume what the defense is going to do. Are they pressed up on me? Are they playing more of a prevent defense? Do I have a linebacker coming over? Am I going to get bumped off the line by the tackle? Like, What's going to happen once I leave the line? I have no idea. I just know that I need to get to point B, which is catching the ball in the end zone. Score points. That's where, that's where we want to go. So we can get bumped off the line. We can have that false sense. This, is, this one always gets people, right? It was so easy when we started, then all of a sudden, it felt like everything fell apart. Well, you, you got hit, you got boom, you got shouldered by a linebacker or you were coming across the middle and you hit, got hit by a linebacker, boom. It disrupts your route, but as long as you get back up, you can continue on with your route. You could still catch the ball. You can still get that touchdown. So we have to have these feelings of understanding of knowing that No matter what it is that we're trying to accomplish, no matter what it is that we're going after in our lives, there's always going to be some sort of adversity. And we have to be okay with that because really there is no growth without pain. There's no growth without tension. Think about weightlifting, bodybuilding. You can't grow muscle if you just don't lift anything. Go into the gym and and lift a weight. (laughs) and That increased tension is going to allow for growth. Same things happen spiritually. Same thing happens with your health. Same thing happens with business. Okay. Tony Robbins talks about this all the time. It's that pain pleasure principle, or we sit in these voids where we just feel too good to be great, where we don't want to really rock the boat. We're kind of doing okay. And trust me, I even get into these, you know, these little like, ah, things are really good right now. I just want to keep moving the boat forward. And then Megan will come over and just kind of knock into my boat and be like, Hey, let's, what about that for point B? And we're like, you know what? I never thought about that. I'm stressed about that, but Let's, let's see if we can get that as well. Or let's see, not if, let's see how this process goes so we can get there. So you're going to be rocking back and forth that too good to be great. You could be great, too great to be amazing, whatever it is. And so the pain and pleasure principle states that pain is a much stronger motivator than pleasure is. Okay. It might sound backwards, but it's true, right? If you go and sit on a seat, and there's a nail in your seat. You sit down, boom, pain, what's gonna happen? Boom, you're gonna shoot off of it, right? It moves you, it motivates you. If you sit in a seat, and it's the most comfortable seat that you've ever sat in in your entire life, you're probably not gonna get out of that seat, or you're gonna buy that that recliner, you're gonna put it in your house, and you're just gonna live in that comfortable position. Pain is what motivates us to get out. What if we're in that super comfortable position, somebody comes, puts a nail in the seat, or you sit in it too long, you wear it down, there's a staple somewhere in there, and you sit on that, ah, boom, you're going to get up, you're going to take action. So a lot of people go through their lives, and this is what happened throughout COVID times, people got, they, they, they kind of took like a new inventory of life. Are they happy in their jobs? Are they happy in their relationships? Are they happy in their friendships and in business? Are they happy? And a lot of people are like, you know what? No. I'm not, I'm not happy. So we hit that pain point, right? We hit that pain point. We're like, I'm ready to do something about this. I hate this. I have anxiety. I'm depressed every single day. I can't wake up and get out of bed in the morning because I have no motivation to do it. I just don't feel like getting up and doing anything. That's a huge telltale sign 
that you're not living your purpose. You're not living to your fulfillment. So do something about it. Figure out what you want your point B to be. And then set your mind and your intention on knowing that is your point B. Also remember, it's not always a clear linear line. Things don't just go by the books. Okay, you can have organizations that are jackasses that try to derail you. You can have threats. You can have people just saying that you, you'll fail. Or if you failed in the past, like, oh, you're going to do it again. And so when you set out and you embark on these things, there's a couple of things that you can do. A lot of people who are used to you being in your current state, your current level of financial abundance, your current state of health, you have encircled yourself with people who know who that version of you is. Okay. When you make that transition for growth, some of that circle may not like that. Sometimes that circle can turn the mirror back and the mirror turns back on themselves and they're like, Ooh, Jock's doing this. I don't like that. Now I'm looking at myself. I don't like that about me, but he's doing something about it, but I don't like it and I don't want to change. So I'm not going to associate with this person anymore. And then you're like, well, wait a second. Jimmy just left. Jimmy won't talk to me anymore. He won't return my calls. And then you have another person who might be like, hey, Jock, that's awesome. Is there anything I can do to help you? I, you know, I, I can't do that myself. I don't think I can do that, but I want to support you. Is there any way that I can support you? What I'm trying to get at is you have to surround yourself by a tribe of people who will support you. Otherwise, you're going to have a whole bunch of people just throwing daggers at you the entire time, pulling back on those arrows, right? And launching them right into you as you're trying to accomplish your goals. The stronger your tribe is, okay? Think about it from football terms again. <laughs> Sorry, I keep talking about football. I love it. When you have a solid tribe of people, all right? Think about being like a quarterback, okay? You're dropping back. You are the commander in chief of the offense. The stronger your tribe is that they have faith in you, that love you, think you're freaking crazy, but love that craziness about you and are willing to support you through it all. And sometimes you have to swap it out, right? You have to draft a free agent, somebody you never thought of or never even knew before. You have to replace your, your center or you have to replace your, your tackle or your guard or you have a new tight end that comes in and you have a new fullback, a new running back. The more people you can add, the stronger your pocket gets. What's the pocket for those of you who don't know? The pocket is when a quarterback drops back to pass the ball, okay? Takes a couple steps back, three, five, 58, depends on what kind of quarterback you are. You basically build a bubble around you or like a wall around you, a line, an offensive line. Your fullback will step up, tailback will go over and block if you need to. The more people you have, the more protected you are from the defense. The more protected you are from the naysayers, the people who don't believe in you. Could be family members that think you're crazy for stepping out and doing something that they've never seen before. Basically, you're protecting yourself from everybody else's insecurity being projected out onto you. So when you go into a bark on this, if you're like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of being sick, right? We'll just use health, for example, because clearly that's what I work with on a daily basis. Say you're, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Everyone's heard that phrase before. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, what are you going to do about it? Right? You've got your friends who are full-blown alcoholics. You've got your other ones who are asking if they, need, if they can get you any McDonald's on their way home from work. You've associated your, your faulty offensive line. Now, you used to be able to make fun of the Browns, but the Browns were actually decent-ish this year. But like, it, it's like your offensive line is just a whole bunch of lazy, lazy people. It's like, eh. Jock's back there. Go get him. <laughs> too lazy today. I'm too tired today. Just go, go attack him. We'll figure it out afterwards. We'll talk about it afterwards, right? Your tribe is only as strong as your weakest link is. So if you have one area of the offensive line who doesn't show up, literally doesn't show up, then you have everybody else in the tribe trying to compensate for that person who dropped, okay, who dropped protection. So if you can wall yourself off, you drop back in a pocket, you have that strong bubble around you. That means on days where you're feeling anxiety, on days where you're feeling self-doubt, on days that you're feeling like you just can't accomplish it and you think you're an idiot for even thinking or dreaming this way, okay? And I'm saying these things because I felt this stuff. Those people in your tribe give an opportunity or have an opportunity to speak life into you, breathe life into you. And for patients who are out there listening, you know that I've talked about this before. 
if your personal relations with people, if those people don't breathe life into you and they're just energy vampires, then they're not serving you. I have actually, uh, yeah, I have a thing over here. If your circle doesn't inspire you, you don't have a circle, you have a cage. You're trapped in your cage, right? So make sure that you select your tribe appropriately. If you're going out and you're starting your own business or you're starting your own health journey, health journey, make sure you have people who are like, hey, I don't know what the hell gluten-free is. I don't know what gluten is. I don't even know what dairy is. I just eat whatever is in front of me. Sometimes they'll want to learn, but more often than not, people are content with being content, right? They're the too good to be graders. They're the ones that they haven't hit that pain point yet. They haven't had that heart attack or cancer diagnosis or whatever it may have been to give them an opportunity to pivot and move into the right direction. Now, sometimes, okay, God will hit you in the face with a sledgehammer. That's painful, okay? I know. I got hit in the face and got jumped in 2009, or at least hit in 2009, and ended up in intensive care unit. And I was like a street fighter up until that point, and I've never used my hands to harm since that point. I drew the line of sand and said, I'm not going to use my hands to hurt. I'm going to use my hands to heal, and that's what got me into chiropractic. Sometimes when we get these diagnoses, God's up there like, holy shit, what do I have to do to get you to move? You were not called to be a burger slipper at Burger King or, or McDonald's. Do something with your life, right? And so this is when I always say, you know, things happen for us. They don't happen to us. And the more we can let that sit with us, the more we can say, well, listen, sometimes like maybe I was just ignoring my life too much. Maybe I didn't give a crap about my health. Maybe I need to start doing something here. Maybe I need to start choosing happiness. Maybe I need to start having better friends around me, you know, and you start realizing, you start actually taking a look and like, man, my offensive line sucks. No wonder I can't accomplish anything. I'm stuck in this rut and I can't get moving. Why? You have all these brilliant ideas, but then you've got these putter outers of the fire. They're just waiting with their freaking fire extinguishers. Like, give me an idea. I'm going to destroy this. You'll fail. I want to do this. You don't have the money to do that. Well, I have to do this. Nope. What you're going to put your family at risk. You know, so like you need to have that proper support. You need to have those proper people around you to allow for your growth. So talking about your health, right? Let's just focus on this for a minute. A lot of us are walking around with mediocre health or, or we're just in reactive health, which is what we're trained to do. We're trained to do it since we're little kids. Okay. We're not reactive healthcare model. We were fine until something's not fine, then just give me a medication so I can be fine again. If you surround yourself with friends who believe the same thing, you will forever be on medications and you'll for, you will forever be sick. Okay? Now I'm not telling you to uproot all of your unhealthy friends. Not all the people that I'm friends with eat and take care of themselves the way that I do. Okay, but I've been doing this long enough that I'm not going to let their bad habits leak into my life. I've come too far, right? It's like an alcoholic. Like, listen, I haven't had a drop of that stuff in 10 years. You can drink, bro, but I'm not drinking. I'm not throwing away everything I've done for the last 10 years just so I can enjoy a drink with you. It's not worth it. Don't feel like you have to just be like, I am divorcing my husband. I'm divorcing my wife. I'm divorcing my kids. I'm divorcing my friends. I'm starting from scratch. I'm just like... Don't uproot your life like that unless it's truly what you want to do. And then please don't blame it on me. This is just on you, okay? If you're going to embark on those things, you have to have that strong mindset. And people can approach this in two separate ways. First way is you don't tell anybody. You're like, hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to do this for myself. I'm going to hold myself accountable for this. And I don't need anybody else to know what I'm doing. Those people tend to have the fear of failure already ingrained in them. Okay, why? Once you tell your friends that you're going to do something and they're good friends, those friends will then hold you accountable if you do not. So if you don't tell your friends what you're doing and you don't follow through, then nobody knows except you right? Sucks. Sucks to hear it. A lot of us do it. 
So again, this is starting with really solid friendships, really solid foundation. So you have, you're already like, Hey, I have five people that I freaking love. They're my tribe. They're awesome. Like I've got a lot of awesome people and I just keep meeting more. What sucks is they're all over the United States. We're going to be doing a, a guy's trip with, um, with a guy. It's, it's going to be awesome. The Northwoods of Minnesota and I'm flying into Fargo. We're like going to freeze our butts off. Like the dude seems like a super awesome guy. I've got a really good buddy, Johnny in Charleston. You know, I've got a lot of good buddies on the other side of like Scottsdale, Norterra, Elliot, Chris, like some really good people that are getting scattered through. Just met a guy who sold me a bunch of gym equipment, super solid, awesome dude, Joel. If you ever need weight equipment, just DM me, I'll get you in contact with him. But like I've accidentally in a way created this tribe of people. And when you're in that, that realm of inspiration where you're inspiring others or you're just feeling inspired you're more inclined to extend your energy to other people and you have that reciprocation of energy back and forth, right? Because a lot of us will get in this one-sided relationship, whether it's in business or it's in health or it's in relationships where somebody just is continuing to be that energy vampire. Just take, 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 take. And then eventually like, hey, when are you going to, What I, like, you've got a hundred IOUs right now. I've come and helped you with so many of these problems. You haven't helped me with a single one. I, I'm, I'm calling in that debt. Right? So make sure you have that solid group of friends. Make sure you have that solid tribe. Come up with your idea, okay, whatever it might be. Surround yourself with people who think it's awesome, okay? And if they don't think it's awesome, bye for now. (laughs) We'll see you later. I'll see you from the top when we get there, okay? Start there. Then bring your tribe in with what you're going to do. Because here's the cool thing, right? Remember when we were in school and we had group projects? When you have group projects like this, like you have four, five, six, seven different minds that are able to contribute pieces and maybe see things that you might not see. And you're like, oh, shoot, I totally missed that. Sounds like a great idea. You know, like I, I've, I've got my one, like one of my best friends back in, in Pittsburgh. He's working on some hunting stuff. And I'm not going to tell you anything about it because... I don't want anybody else stealing this idea, but he had certain adversity and he was, he, he saw a need for this sort of equipment with hunting and he's sending me pictures and ideas and back and forth. And like, listen, I love to hunt. He's taken me, I think like two times, I believe hunting. That's all I've ever done. <laughs> this is two times, but I love nature. So any excuse to get up in the morning and just go hide in nature Totally cool with that. Sounds like a great day. I don't have to kill anything <laughs> out there. And now it would be a reward if I did, but I, I just enjoy that stuff. So again, somebody who would seemingly not know anything about hunting, I don't even know how to keep scents off me. You're telling me to rub deer urine on my boots. I'm like, that makes no sense. That sounds disgusting. Like I'm going to smell like pee this entire time. Like what? So he came to me, we bounced ideas back and, you know, some of the stuff I said, it helped him. It helped him in creation of what this thing is going to be. And so you never know who in your circle can give you a good idea or who in this circle is ready to inspire you when, when you need it. Okay. And it's okay to cycle through people until you find that solid tribe as well. Here's a new way to assess, right? And I don't care if you've had friends since you were two okay i don't even care if it's your identical twin this might get me in trouble whatever if you can treat your relationships like you had never met this person before in your life and you do an inventory of when you talk to them how do you feel after okay how do you feel after you talk to Jimbo, how do you feel after you talk to a sister, a brother, family member, a mom or a dad or aunt, an uncle? How do you feel? Take inventory. There's so much societal pressure on keeping people in our lives just out of formalities. They've always been there. It's blood. It's your long lost cousin. It's been your best friend since you were two. He just always is arrested. And you always get in trouble every time you're with them, right? If you do an inventory and you're like, holy shit, every time I talk to Jimbo, and I don't have any friends named Jimbo, but I'm just making stuff up. Every time I talk to Jimbo, I am depressed, I'm angry, I'm irritable, 
All he talks about is blah, blah, blah. I can't get a word in. Why do you talk to him then? Why? Because you're supposed to? Because he wants you to? How long are you going to sacrifice your wants for somebody else's needs or for somebody else's wants? Right? Stop sacrificing pieces of yourself for somebody else's happiness. If they're not willing to, to, to give anything in return and breathe life into you, then what are you doing? Now, this brings in a lot of issues where we talk about fear of confrontation. Right? A lot of people don't like confrontation. I don't like confrontation. I bend over backwards to make things comfortable for as many people as possible. It's like a design flaw of mine, I guess, but I'm an empath. So like I absorb that negative energy. I absorb the hatred, the anger, the, all of that stuff. And it turns into this giant fireball inside me. And it's like, ah, I need to go lift weights right now or else the house is coming down. Like, I absorb that. So it's good if you're going to, and again, this is for you guys. If you're going to be cutting people out of your lives, right? Cutting people out of your lives, then make sure you give them an opportunity or make sure you explain yourself to them. Like, listen, Jimbo, every time I talk to you, bro, like, I feel like shit. You know, you're always negative. You're always talking about this. You know, I just feel like this, this, this is not a good fit for, for where I want to go. It's like a breakup. It's just, it's not, it's not you, it's me. Right. But like, that's really important, like really important because it sets that healthy boundary up because misery loves company. If you let one person in like that, then another is going to come. Then another, then another, then another, then another. And sometimes when you pluck a weed out of your garden or you replace an offensive lineman, you'll get another one that fits the bill, the exact same resume. And you're like, oh my gosh, I can't get rid of these guys. You're gone too. You're gone too. You're gone too. You're gone too. Until you find one that you can plug in and you're like, all right, I like my roster. I like my starting line. Let's do this. Okay. Because when we're talking about the power of the pool, when you're pulling back and you have that tension and this tension isn't just like momentarily, this tension can last weeks, months, years. You can have dips. Once you're at the top, you still are going to have adversity. You're still going to have anxiety. You're still going to have lack of sleep. Anybody that tells you that they don't is full of it. It's impossible. It's impossible to not still live with a little bit of that fear. You know why? Because the fear is a motivator to keep your hustle going. Fear is not a bad thing. Fear is just, it's a man-made emotion. Really, it is. If, like, if we think about simplistic times, how God wanted us to live, there wouldn't be any fear. There wouldn't be any anxiety. There wouldn't be any fear of judgment. Well, take the fear of the judgment out of the way. But <laughs> there wouldn't be any of those societal fears. Okay, we would just be living in harmony. Everybody would be like, oh, hey, neighbor. Oh, hey, how are you doing? Everything is peaceful. Everything is happy. Everything is copacetic. But that's not how the world is right now. We corrupted it. Humans suck. <laughs> a lot of humans, they suck. Their agendas, they're, they're terrible. They're not, they're not in our best interest at all. And they're uprooting everything that we were you know, created to be. But that's a whole different point. But when you're, when you're pulling back, Okay, you're pulling back on that adversity, you're pulling back on that tension, you're pulling back on that anger, you're pulling back on that anxiety, and you pull, 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 and you add all these emotions, you have to remember to fix your gaze on point B, because if you go back, and you're like, you know what, it's just more comfortable here, it's easier not to be confrontational, you know what, I think it is a dumb idea, I don't know why I even thought about that, nobody's doing that, there's probably a reason why nobody's doing that, probably because it's never been successful, Oh, that business used to be right here. It used to be in this city. Oh, well, then it must not be a good city for it. You know, seriously, like, I'll give an example. When we opened in Pittsburgh, we were a cash-based chiropractic office. Okay. That's all we did. Cash-based chiropractic. Did a little bit of the functional medicine stuff. Not as heavy as we do now, obviously, because that's all we do. We were a cash-based business. Do you know how many people, all right, told us, that we needed to collect insurance to get by. Like everybody that we came across, we would get phone calls for, for new patients who would say, do you accept Blue Cross Blue Shield? Do you accept Aetna? Do you accept blah, blah, blah? And they would hang up immediately after you said no. So people were like, it's impossible. You can't, you can't open a cash-based practice here. Everybody has insurance. It's a blue collar city. You need to take people's insurance in order for them to be able to get care with you. Right? 
And I knew in my heart, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to pay these insurance companies because these insurance companies are the reason why everyone's sick, suffering and dying. It's true. So I don't want to give them any money. I don't, they, they don't deserve the money. They don't deserve a cut of what they didn't do anything for. Like, I'm not giving, I'm not going to make 17 cents on an adjustment and you're going to make 70 bucks on, on my adjustment. Get the hell out of here with that. Right? You leech, go away. But I had a strong goal. I had a strong compass. I had a strong support. My wife, Megan, was diehard whole time. Diehard. Were there times I'm like, oh, maybe I should. It may, it'd be easier. It'd be more comfortable. We'd fit in better. More, we'd get more referrals. Maybe. No. Well, yeah, those ideas crept in. But again, Tension, 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 power of the pool, power of the pool, power of the pool, boom, launched us forward. It, we had so much tension and pull, it launched us across the United States to Arizona. <laughs> I never said that, but seriously, like we, we are now living in our most abundant state. Megan is loving life. We have this beautiful house that we have now. We get this beautiful, I mean, shoot, I've got mountains out my backyard. Every, every window that I look out in my home there's a 360 degree mountain view, okay? And I'm not living in some bougie 6 million, 10 million, $50 million home, okay? We just manifested this, which we'll do a whole podcast on this. I'm gonna have her do one with me. We just need to get a nanny for it. We manifested every single bedroom, every single bathroom, every single detail, what the backyard looked like, what the mountain view was gonna be like. We wanted to make sure that we saw the, the sunrise. We, we, we see the moon rise as well. We wanted the stars to be clear, uh, less ambient light. The price point, actually the price point was half of what we were <laughs> anticipating to buy and everything fell into place except for there was one day of a hiccup where it was just like, huh, which we'll talk about on, on an additional podcast with Megan. But for the most part, we manifested all of this stuff and we, we, we fixed our gaze on it. You know, we, we did like the Joe Dispenza where we visualized every single aspect of it. We did a, a walkthrough of this home and I remember sitting on the couch visualizing the dimensions of the home. I'm like, okay, so the bathroom's over there. So that's going to be different. The bedroom is downstairs on the, this side of the home, but now it's going to be upstairs on the other side of the home. Office is going to be downstairs. It's going to be with, uh, you know, tile floor. We're going to have to get some there. We've got to get some office ideas. We want to make sure that we have the, the walkway, upstairs loft, got this, that, kitchen's over here, backyard. Visual I kept visualizing it time and time and time again, because a visualization, especially prior to bed and first thing in the morning is one of the best ways to manifest stuff and gravitate stuff towards you. Okay. Seriously is. So when it comes to business endeavors, visualize it, visualize what your ideal day looks like. When are you waking up? What are you doing? What's your relationship with like your wife, or your husband? What's your relationship like with your kids? How many hours a week are you working? How many days a week are you working? Are you going on trips? Are you going on vacations? Are you in masterminds? Are you going to join groups? Who is your tribe? Who do you want to grow with, right? So visualize all those things. And the more you do it, the quicker the results will come. Same thing with health. A lot of us, because pain, it's physical, it's right in our face. If I've got low back pain and every single day I wake up, I'm like, oh, low back pain again, son of a bitch, little back, oh, ah. start your day off with negative. You can only focus on that. So it's difficult to visualize, hey, I'm going to be walking, I'm going to be deadlifting, I'm going to be doing whatever, whatever the limit, I'm going to be able to put my pants on, I'm going to be able to put my underwear on, tie my shoes. Visualize, 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 visualize being healthy, visualize not having irritable bowel, visualize not having cancer. Visualize not having diabetes. Visualize these things. Believe these things. And even if just I am affirmations. Visualize who you are and it will happen. Okay. The more you can visualize too, the more you can rest your mind from the anxiety, from the doubt, from the lack. If you're like, I don't know how I'm going to afford it. Money is energy. Money is a currency. And I'm not sitting here speaking off white privilege or anything. Because trust me, we've been... We've been down in the bottom of the bottom of the barrels. Trust me, we have been. And we've always had faith to the point where now I don't even, it's a, it's another design flaw and here I am, but I don't even know what's in our bank accounts. I don't in the business as well as personal. 
I, I, I have somebody to look at my business stuff, handle my taxes, do things, handle the office work. And Megan monitors our finances in the house and everything else. And that's good. Because my mindset is we will never be in lack because God will always give in abundance. And it's always been true. The more we're able to believe in that, the more we're able to manifest abundance. Okay? Even in the shit. Even when we were broke as shit living in my parents' basement. Okay? We still believed what our end goal, what our end future was going to look like. And we're still expanding upon that on different things that we want to do. Okay? Because when we're in poverty, we have a poverty mindset. When we're in abundance, we have an abundant mindset. What if we had an abundant mindset and a poverty mindset? Because you're like, every day, okay, I'm going to get up. I want to work. I'm going to hustle. I'm going to, because if you're just in a, in, a, in a poverty mindset, you're just going to be lazy. Ah, what's the point? I can't do it. No reason my family's ever done this. I don't know how so-and-so does it. All right, Chris Harder did a, um, for those of you who don't know Chris Harder, go and follow him. But he just did a post on, on Instagram and basically like saying like somebody made like $200 million or something just farting into a jar on TikTok. Like, tell me you can't make money now. Like, I mean, I'm, I, I, I don't know if I would degrade myself to fart in a jar <laughs> for 200 million or whatever it was. But, but seriously, opportunities are out there. The market, the demographics are, are out there for you to be successful. Apparently, people love hearing farts in a jar. I don't, I don't even know what would be fun about that. I, I, I don't know. I can just imagine, I guess, college kids, frat kids. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what would be, yeah. I, I, that leaves me speechless. Anyways, steps to be successful, right? Successful in business, successful in life, successful in relationships, successful anywhere. Doesn't matter. The, the equation is basically the same. Have the right mindset. Have the abundant mindset. Believing that all things are possible through he who believes, right? Abundant mindset. Surround yourself by a good tribe. Awesome people that breathe life into you. Keep trying, keep finding, keep searching, but you also won't find those people until you're in that abundant mindset. Okay, because each level that you go up, you have to know that, hey, maybe those new friends were only in there for a season. You're not done growing. They might be at this current time, so you're gonna project above them. You're gonna have to find more people. Okay, and it's okay. It's a phase in life. Again, don't have that social obligation. Like, well, they were with me in the beginning. Yeah. And you can still be friends with them, but they don't have to know about every one of your ideas, especially if they're being naysayers. Now, they might just be like, hey, I don't have anything to give. I just want to support the shit out of you. I think these are amazing ideas. Keep them. That's awesome. Yeah. You're my buddy. Let's come on. Let's, let's do this. So fix the mindset. Fix your tribe. No point A. No point B. Know that you don't know. You don't know what the, the, the defense is going to be doing. You don't know how you're going to be defended. But remember, the more adversity, the more difficulty, the more you struggle with sleeping at night, each time you experience that emotion, you're being pulled back, pulled back, more tension, more tension, more tension. At some point, it's going to be released and you're going to launch forward. And I'm excited for that. Now, I know this podcast is kind of all over the place. We talked about, about the power of the pool, fear of failure, just got mixed into the subconscious mind and all kinds of stuff. But, <laughs> but that's what we do here on this podcast. That's why we call it the Doc Jock Show. There's, we talk about anything and everything on this podcast because I want clear and relevant information to be out there for you. And I feel like this is something that is really, really necessary. Like I, I had a conversation with one of my docs that I coach yesterday or two days ago. And he was struggling with this too. He was struggling with mindset, right? We get this paralysis by analysis where we overanalyze things and then we paralyze ourselves. Like, Ooh, I don't have all the tools. I don't have enough books. I don't have enough this. I, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Or he's doing that. How is it? We, we did the same thing. And how is he doing that? And I'm stuck here. And what? Fear of judgment, fear of comparison. Okay. Or curse of comparison. And then, yeah, paralysis by analysis. So just figure that out, plan, okay? And see where that trajectory takes you. Start small if you want to. 
Because each time you do it, and each time you get a little bit of what you put out there, it's kind of addicting. And you're like, okay, we got this, but what else can we do? What else? What else? Who else? What else? And it will come to you. So thank you guys for listening today. Hopefully this inspired you. Hopefully you listen to the whole thing. Hopefully you love wrangling tangents because we got a lot of that today. All right. <laughs> so thank you guys for listening uh, today. We'll, we'll start releasing some more episodes of Doc Jock Show. We're going to start interviewing. We got the month of February is going to be packed with interviews. I have some amazing guests that are going to be on here. So I'm really excited to share that information, their information, their stories with you to give you more insight, to give you more ideas of how to truly be the most optimal version of yourself, the most limitless version of yourself. So thank you. We'll talk soon.